here and welcome to our Spirit FM studio at the front where we've got a nice fireplace going there and a nice manger scene behind me, a Christmas tree and all of that. Looks pretty good, huh? Uh, I like it here. It's, it's really nice. And I want to talk to you today about something that I think is just fantastic. The prophetic traditions of Christmas. Now, you might wonder, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean by that, prophetic traditions of Christmas? Well, what I mean by that is that, that our Christmas traditions actually are, even though some of them were overlapping with paganism and all of this, you know, some of the things people, some, you know, legalistic Christians can get into, they don't like this and they don't like that because, uh, you know, the Christmas tree was, uh, you know, used in, well, they still worship trees over in India but I don't know anybody here worshiping trees. You know, but you get into all this kind of stuff and you start to go, uh, well, what about all these traditions? Maybe you should ditch them and who cares? Let's just worship Jesus. Well, you know what? Uh, I want to share with you something that God gave me like maybe 10 years ago. You can download the notes too. Uh, I call it the prophetic traditions of Christmas. And what it's about is this thought that maybe... Our prophetic, our, our traditions of Christmas are what's holding the culture back from actually going over the edge into sheer paganism. Ever think about that? And why do I say that? Well, I, I say that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, in the Old Testament, you find God's instructions to Israel were to recite the stories of what God's deliverance and what he did in Israel, to worship him, psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, all that sort of thing. Uh, to have regular festivals every year that he mandated, to call to mind, to teach your children, to teach your grandchildren, all of this was there so that culturally who they were as God's people was kept alive. Now, we become Christians and we have the spirit of Christ within us and a lot of, you know, spirit-filled, charismatic Christians, we, we shifted away from tradition and I did. I mean, certainly uh, I, I left behind traditions where I wear a dog collar as a minister and all that kind of stuff. And the hymn sandwich at church where you just have three hymns and a reading and, and it's all together and it's over in 45 minutes. Uh -uh. I want the presence of Jesus to be breathing life into everything, his Holy Spirit all over everything. But you know what? We may have been pushing out some really prophetic things. And of lately, uh, as a kind of prophet, prophets and prophecy has been restored in the last couple of decades, we realize that how we speak and what we declare in the name of Jesus uh, brings things to pass in the spirit realm because we as believers have authority and they call it prophetic acts, prophetic words. In fact, that's exactly what I do here with the radio station ministering to Campbell River. I declare on the air God's love for Campbell River, God's blessing for Campbell River, speak positively the will of God into our city, and we've seen transformations take place. And that, that's something for another time. But I'll tell you what, this idea works. Uh, George Otis, on the, on the side of studying spiritual darkness, talked about something in the Twilight Labyrinth. He, he talked about how cultures that are in bondage to spiritual darkness reinforce the darkness through their seasonal festivals and the powers and principalities are reinforced. Well, let's turn it around the other way. If our culture, even those that are not Christian, are engaging in traditions that are pointing to Jesus, that can be reinforcing the spiritual light in our culture. You think about it. Uh, I'll get into some of this in a second here. But it is really, even though, you know, you don't hear Christmas holidays even said in the schools anymore, it's just the winter holidays, I got to say to them, get your own holiday. It's Christmas holiday. That's December 25th. That's why it's a holiday in Canada, okay? Uh, because it's Christmas Day. But it could be that what we do has prophetic significance with the kingdom of God on earth as we do it. And I want you to get your mindset there right now. Think faith. Think the things of God. Think positive in the name of Jesus right now. Now here's a scripture that's interesting. Jesus said this in Matthew 13, 52. 
Therefore, every scribe who instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like a man who's a householder or a manager of a home, brings out treasures old and new. When you understand the kingdom of God and how it works, treasures that are old, the tradition, the standard things, the really good things you brought out, but also new things. And they all bless and contribute to the kingdom of God. We've got the old classic Christmas carols that I play on the radio station, but also some great new Christmas songs too. And old and new. And traditions are like that. We have traditions we've added in our family that we invented for ourselves. Like uh, we, we, early on when our kids were just little, we, we, I built a manger, put it in our living room with hay in it, and it's empty until Christmas morning. And suddenly baby Jesus shows up. Santa never showed up because he's, he's now pointing in the other direction, okay? So here's some prophetic acts at Christmas, Christmas traditions. First one, Christmas lights. And I mean, this should be obvious. Christmas lights. I decorate my house. We put lights on the Christmas tree and here and there and everywhere. Lights are all over. Got lights in the studio, lights in the stores. There's all sorts of stuff out there. Why lights? You ever think about that? What's, what's the significance of lights? Lights declare Jesus Christ, the light of the world, or according to John chapter 1, the light that lights every man was coming into the world. Now, of course, the world doesn't recognize it. And John chapter 1 says that the world did not know him. They don't receive him. But to us who believe or receive him, he gives the power, the right to become children of God. The light. Christmas lights are a prophetic declaration of the light and the life of Jesus Christ coming into the world. That's why we light everything up. Isn't that amazing? Did you ever think about that before? So keep on going with it. Okay? Another tradition. Number two, Christmas carols. Well, what a remarkable tradition. And this one should be obvious that it's prophetic because where and when do you get Christian songs playing in the stores? Think about that. You go to any of the stores and you might be having some, you know, we wish you a Merry Christmas or Ho Ho or something going on, but then you get uh, uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing instrumental or something playing. Whoa, there's the gospel proclaimed in the store where everybody's shopping. They hear the words, hear the music, hum it along. Many people grew up on it. It's a celebration, but it's a prophetic declaration of Christ and Christmas. Wow, it is amazing. We can sing, Christ the Savior is born. No more let sin and sorrow grow, rule or thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. Da, 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 da. And you can hear the horn section playing in the background in the store. Wow, prophetic tradition of Christmas. Isn't that amazing? How about a third one? Here's uh, Christmas presents. This should be obvious. Why? Because giving presence, presence is a prophetic action and thanksgiving based on God's giving us Christ. Wow. It's God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In fact, uh, John chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, as he's talked about the light coming into the world and the word was with God and all of that, he gets to a point where in, in verse 17, chapter 1, verse 17, he, he is uh, talking about how the, the, um, uh, we receive fullness of him, grace upon grace. What a gift. gift. Gift is grace. Charis. His gifts upon gifts. He's overflowing with love and giving. This is what our God is like. <coughs> so, Gift giving is a prophetic action which, done with the right heart, declares the giving, loving gospel and the, the, uh, of God. Now, it's amazing because intuitively, everybody knows there's a right way to give gifts and a wrong way. Everybody knows that the selfish Scrooge thing is wrong. In fact, all you got to do is watch all these Christmas stories and TV shows and all of that. Don't they have the underlying theme of, you know, they're, they're cranky, they're selfish, or this, they're that, and then they get changed? Sure. Reconciliation happens. Usually that's, that's what the story is about one way or another. 
and it's a feel-good story. Why is it a feel-good story? Because you've latched into the prophetic story of Jesus Christ flowing through the season, flowing through the television programming, flowing through the presence, flowing through the gift giving. Don't let that get robbed. But hang on to it and be a blessing person in the name of Jesus. How? All right, here's another one. How about Charles Dickens' The Christmas Carol? You going to watch it this year? You know, I mean, there's so many versions of it now, isn't there? You start with the real old one, the black and white one with Alistair Sims, but then you've got every kind of version. You know, we, we had the, 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 the Muppets and the Carol Burnett and the, you know, I mean, on and on it goes. There's all kinds. Everybody does it because it is the endless telling of the gospel of a man, Scrooge, who was caught up in sin, who, while well, I wrote down what happened to him, he is confronted by sin, his own sin, He's confronted by his mortality and the judgment that was coming to him. He repents. He gets born again. He's changed man. He's light as a feather. He's a new creation. He has the joy of the Lord. He can't even stop laughing. <laughs> Isn't that something? That, that's the prophetic tradition of Christmas that's built into the Christmas carol. And there's actually a movie coming out now about uh, Charles Dickens uh, trying to make that story. I, I'd like to see it. Wow, the movie is undoubtedly a popular proclamation of the gospel and wonderful, wonderful. You know, even as I'm thinking about it, uh, I, I haven't included it here, but Santa Claus, now Santa Claus has been stolen and corrupted by the devil. He, it's just a false gospel that's going on there. Kids hope in it, and then their hopes are dashed and they grow up, and it's the devil's way of ruining trust and faith in the real gospel, right? Get our kids to Christ first and early before they're exposed to that stuff. Don't, don't be carrying it on. There's lots you can just do instead of, of uh, Santa. But uh, he, St. Nicholas, was a real person. Now, in fact, over in Europe, they separate St. Nicholas Day from Christmas Day. Christmas Day is for Christ and the gift giving is separate days. You know that? Now here we've mixed them up and pff, what a mess. But listen, St. Nicholas lived in Turkey. He was, he was a Christian bishop over uh, Myra in that area in the third, fourth century. And uh, he loved the poor. He gave gifts to the poor. I think he even put gifts in their shoes that were outside the door. You know, can you see where the traditions are coming from? And being a bishop then, you know, wore the red suit, the whole deal. Funny how that's been lost and corrupted, but that's the root. Okay, number six, <laughs> Christmas tradition, the feasts, the food, feasting on roast beast. And I wrote, fellowship and food is the foremost fashion for faithful friends to feel the Father's favor at the family feast. Yes, it is. Food and Christianity go together. Did you know that? Well, in the book of Acts, it says the church, the first church there in Jerusalem, attended to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to breaking of bread, and prayer. <laughs> now, did you notice two things? One is, two of those things are spiritual, the apostles' teaching and prayer, and the other two seem like they're natural. Fellowship, getting together, having a good time with the folks, the other believers, and food. Wow, they're talking about the life of the church was spiritual, apostles' teaching, prayer, and fellowship and breaking of bread. Did you know fellowship with believers is not unspiritual? Eating with believers and celebrating is not unspiritual. We've got to get rid of this idea that the things we do in the world are unspiritual unless you're pointed away from God. They can be very much spiritual. And that feast, that eating, you know, and with prayer, receiving it with thanksgiving, is a prophetic tradition of Christmas. The Lord supplies everything. Feasting's prophetic. Why? Because the Lord will one day set a banquet for all nations, it says in Isaiah. And we will one day be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, you know, even communion is not supposed to be some sterile little wafer in a, in a sip. 
Jesus said, whenever you eat and drink, eat and drink, do this in remembrance of me. Prophetic, prophetic action in the meal at Christmas time. Apply it, live it. And finally, we've got church services. Well, I was a pastor for 27 years, and I'll tell you what, a lot of people didn't show up except at Easter and Christmas. And why were they doing that? Uh, well, because basically they weren't Christian, but they were coming because there's something calling them. What's calling them? There's something prophetic in the spirit, drawing. There's cultural memories and traditions, drawing. This is the time to explain and pre present Jesus Christ. Church service. They want to celebrate the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus and the Savior, and they want to celebrate his birth. For some reason, they find that relevant, but the rest of the activity of the church is not relevant. <laughs> Let that sink in, everybody. We've got to become relevant for everything we're doing in our life. If being a Christian doesn't fit your business or fit your family or fit your activities, you've you got something out of kilter there. Listen, let Christmas celebration become a prophetic tradition that speaks of the things of God, that announces into the atmosphere around your house and in your family and out in the world, announces verbally and in the spirit what God has done in Christ. That's the prophetic traditions of Christmas. And you know what? Be free to pursue some new ones, but don't give up those old ones. They're awesome and so powerful. And I've got to say to you, from Karen and I, from Spirit FM, the others, like John Twig here, and, and our board, Merry Christmas. And thank you for everyone out there who stands with us in this ministry. We appreciate you so much. And God bless you as you head into this family holiday season. Amen.